Have you fought down there before? Never fought in Brazil, no. I actually grew up right next door in Argentina, right? but I never fought in Brazil. So this is the first time for me to be in Brazil fighting. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be down there. You know, the more you think about it, and I knew you, I, I know UFC did an event a, a long time ago in Brazil. It's kind of shocking that they don't do regular shows down there. Is there a reason? Uh, I think, you know, right now the UFC is attacking the European market. And the Latin market, nobody's really gone down there and attacked that. So, I mean, I'm sure that's coming around the corner. There's been talk about UFC start, starting to set up camps down there and, and, and uh, gyms. Uh, it's really popular in Argentina and Brazil. It's been popular for a long time. So it's a matter of getting you know somebody starting and going down there. Well, a lot of it's based on money too. So e- economically, if they wanted to go to Brazil, could they? Do they I don't even know. Do they have an arena that's a ten thousand seat arena? Could they fill it at real prices? In Brazil, yeah, the the arena that I'm fighting is a fifteen thousand uh, okay. people arena. So and, and you know they have they have arenas. That's not a problem. And uh, this is a real big card, so it, it's. It'll be good. Because I was surprised during the uh, post-fight press conference for UFC 102. We were up in Portland covering it. And uh, someone asked, you know, Big Nog, Noguera, like, hey, would you ever like to fight in your homeland? And it's kind of like, of course. But I, I don't even, I didn't know if it was possible or why, you know, if there's not a, a huge market down there. There should be because, I mean, you want to talk about a pedigree. Brazil is outrageous for producing fighters. Yeah, right now, I mean, this card is is pretty, it's huge. It's a huge card. And uh, their, Noguera's little brother was supposed to be fighting in it. Last I heard, he might have pulled out because uh, the, either UFC snatched him up, or but he was signed up on the card. There's Paulo Filo, there's Arona fighting on the card. Wow, this is, you know what, I'm going to read through this card. This is a crazy card. Um, on the main card, it's uh, you and Paulo Filo. Ninja Hua is fighting on the card. Uh, Arona, who hasn't fought in like two years, who, if he comes back to the States, you know, because he fought in Japan, is going to be a huge star. Yeah. Um, Arona against Marvin Eastman, who is a, we got to get Marvin on before he heads down. Uh, he's a Vegas guy. Uh, Pedro Hizzo, is that right? Pedro Hizzo is yeah. going to fight Munson? Yeah, Munson. That's, wow, right. that's That's a good fight as well. So this is, this is a good fight card. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big fight card, especially in Brazil. You know, it's a lot of people will be out. All right, you're fighting Paulo, uh, who's an interesting guy. First of all, it's going to be a 205, right? Light heavyweight? Yeah, 205. He, Paulo actually just got done fighting in Japan at 185. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was just like three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Yep. Uh, so, frankly, that's where he should be because he's... Uh, he's 5'8". He, <laughs> he ain't 5'8". He t- he, to me, he looks like he's like 5'6 or 5'7". Yeah. He is a squatty dude. Um, <laughs> from what you hear, is everything together for Paulo? Because when he was in WEC, he was having... He was having some substance problems, and it I, I don't know. He, he had one fight, it looked like, against Sonin where he was losing his mind. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's rumors about that. There's stuff on there about that. He just, like, he just fought in Japan. He looked pretty good. He actually, he didn't, the rumors were he didn't make the weight either. He, he was supposed to fight 85, and he didn't quite make the weight. So you, you never know. It's, it's a good time to fight him, though. <laughs> yeah, I, so. You know what? It is a good time for you because I, I watched that fight against uh, Melvin Manhoff, and I, I, I thought, again, his striking – um, he has didn't no look striking. good. He, yeah. he yeah, really has no striking. It's it's all over the place. Manhoff had had him a couple times. Luckily, Paulo was able to you know uh, get a clinch and take him down. And Manhoff didn't really know what to do. Just laid there and and uh, Paulo just finished with the armbar. It was a pretty you know first rounder. But he was gassed. You could tell he was already gassed in that first minute or two of the fight. Be a nice win for you. And we're talking to Alex Schoenauer, who's going to be uh, down in Brazil on September 12th. Big card, a lot of Brazilians featured. Um, yeah, I just I, I have my doubts about him. I know there was a lot of buildup for him when he was WEC champ, but the more I saw him, his stand-up isn't great. I don't know that he has discipline. And uh, I, th- I was thinking about it the other day. I was putting together a list of five guys who could beat, not beat, who deserve a fight. It would be intriguing to fight Anderson Silva. I don't even think Paulo's in the in the mix now. Not to downgrade who you're fighting, but uh he's got flaws and he's got to get, you know, he's got to yeah, get it together. He, you know, Paulo is a great, he's a jiu-jitsu champ. He he's got a great uh, uh record on him. He's awesome. But uh, got to get it to the ground though. But he's got to, you know, he's got to get it to the ground. His hands aren't really there and his hands really haven't improved. So, he's got to, you know, he's got a couple of fights to go to get out there first. So So what do you do to make sure you stay off the mat? I've been working with a lot of different wrestlers. Just, uh, just punch and move. Don't stay in front of them. Don't, uh, don't be sta- stagnant. Just got to move the whole time. Circle, circle, move. Punch and move, and get out of the way. So, who who do you work with at the Tap Out Training Center? Who could replicate that level of jujitsu? Uh, there's Kevin Randleman trains there, and uh, uh, Rath White. He's my Muay Thai kickboxing coach. Right. 
And uh, so I got a lot of different different guys. And then also, even if it goes down the ground, I have a great jiu-jitsu instructor, Sergio Pena, is my jiu-jitsu coach, which actually, his jiu-jitsu comes from the guy that Paulo Filo has been training lately, which is uh, Osvaldo down in Brazil. He's like one of the top guys down in Brazil, trains a lot of the big, big jiu-jitsu guys. So, you know, even if it goes to the ground, I'm, I'm ready for it.